Hey everybody, it's Adam Tracy. I'm gonna go a little bit off script today because somebody asked it online in a, a, a X Live thing I was doing. So the the real quick lay of the land in terms of Native American gaming, right? Like, and there's this belief, and it's in crack that there's like nothing to it. You can just sort of like pop up, you know, if you're a member, you have authorization, you sort of pop up a casino. It's not. It's not how it works. So here's the overview. Under the Constitution, under various acts that follow, Native American lands are deemed to be sovereign nations within the United States, right? And after a long time of like trying to figure out what we can and can't do, in 1988, they passed the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act. And basically what it did was set forth three classifications of gaming on native land. Class one, which is like tribal games, right? That inure to the residents. Class two is like bingo, kino type games. And then class three is your full casino, right? Whether yeah, mostly land-based. And it also created a regulatory authority, the National Indian Gaming Commission, and it set forth certain requirements in terms of licensing, right? So with respect to the gaming authority, their job is to regulate class two, which is like your casino bingo type operations. And they also will review like tribal gaming regulations. But more so importantly, they will review and approve state compacts because it's one thing to go through the process of obtaining the license on the native land you also then have to go to the state in which you're located and enter into a compact agreement which basically states this is what we're allowed to do this is the fee split with the state and you know various other reporting and operational requirements, right? And that has to go back then to Washington, which approves the compact. And if that goes through, then you are off and running, right? So it's not this sort of wild west, like we can just put up a casino wherever we want. And what you found is that there are a lot of Native American run casinos that are actually not on native land, but due to their experience of running on native land, they've sort of bootstrapped that into places like Hard Rock Seminole and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, there are a lot of hoops to jump through and it obviously starts at the tri tribal level, right? And getting the approval and bringing in the pieces and, you know, and doing it that way. But you're going to not only have to work with the state and get approval, which can be the most difficult part of it, but then the, the regulatory authority in Washington has to approve what you agreed to with the state, which is, which is not always a guarantee, right? So that's like at an overview, but what's important to remember is that, you know, despite like what you read, Tribal lands and tribal governments can't issue other licenses that usurp state authority, like so payments and the like. There's banking, but it's usually like this sort of combined partnership with, you know, federally chartered banks. But like for payments and everything else, the tribal lands, the tribal government is still subject and the operators within are still subject to prevailing state and federal laws, most importantly, in this case, Bank Secrecy Act, right? And every casino in America is registered as a money service business. Why? Well, think about what you do at a casino. You have cash, you go to the counter, you get chips, vice versa, right? So it's really a money exchanger, it just does it in one place, right? So even a lot of casinos will have money transmitter licenses, which they may or may not need, but at the end of the day, they're all money service businesses. And so that triggers AML, KYC, 
and the like. So like if you're, you know, ostensibly a whale and you come in with a lot of cash, like there is actually an obligation for like SARS and CTR reporting and stuff like that, which casinos regularly do. And, you know, obviously there's tax reporting obligations like Form 8800, which I talked about before. And also, you know, if you have cash a ticket, whether that's like a horse track or somewhere else, you have to sign for it if it's over a certain amount, right? So you get a 1099. So it's, um, it's wildly profitable, right? But despite what, like the feedback or at least the input rather, that I received during my chat last week, it's not this sort of like, let's throw a sign up and, you know, we bought a couple of roulette tables and let's go, right? There's actually a high level of regulation, which I would argue to some extent is higher than some of the states that allow online gaming like a Delaware or New Jersey, something like that, right? To get that license versus what's almost always a physical brick and mortar, um, you know, location. So that's kind of just a very high level overview, but you know, the profitability can't be understated. It's just not that simple to do it, right? And it's not, you know, and, and obviously the ownership uh, and management of tribal gaming has to be predominant by tribal members. And obviously, if you fall outside of that, you have to go in with that knowledge and say, you know, we're a partner, but to only to a certain extent. And that'll vary from tribe to tribe. So <clears throat> it's an interesting thing. The connectivity is also kind of hard, like when you're trying to find, you know, if you have an idea. And even like on the class two license for like bingo and keno, things like that, which play amazingly well. Like in places in Florida, it's like just, it, it, you, know, these, you can't find a place to sit, right? Because playing bingo for actual money. Um, but it's interesting. So, you know, if that's a route that you've considered or tried and failed or what have you, feel free to reach out. I may be able to offer some insight on, you know, who to contact, how to get a, how to get the ball rolling and kind of what the, what the, the process is, even though there's no delineated sort of process to sell your idea, because that's effectively what you're doing. There's a delineated process in the back end to go through all the regulation and get it done. But um, yeah, hit me up, adam at adamtracy.io. I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.